Hey guys, welcome to day 7, and today in this video we're going to talk about events and coroutines, and how these things allow us basically to call functions across objects, across multiple objects, large numbers, and across time. We're going to look at first how do we deal with public functions in order to like call a function from one object to another, and then how do we scale that up with events and delegates, and then finally how can we uh, invoke function over time using things like coroutines and invoke. So let's get started. We open the Unity Hub and we're going to create a new project. Day 7, raycasting. No, not this one. Coroutines. Events. So here we are. So what are we going to do? What we're going to do is we're going to have a sphere that's going to fall onto a plane. When it hits that plane, it's going to trigger some behavior in another object, let's say a capsule. So we start by creating our sphere. We move it a little bit to the right, a little bit higher. We're going to have our plane. Bring it a little bit down, up to the right. And we're going to have a capsule that's going to be affected by the event. So the first way we can do this is by having um, a public function on the capsule, which is going to affect, um, which is going to be triggered by um, the plane, essentially. So this is how it would uh, it would work. We start by creating a script on the capsule, and I'm going to call it capsule manager. And let's say we just want to change its color, so we create a new function, but this time the important part is that we put public in front, public keyword. So public void, and we're going to call it change color. Component mesh render uh, dot material dot color equals color dot black. So it's going to turn black. Then we need a way to affect this, and so we want it to happen on a collision. And the collision is going to happen on the plane. So on the plane, I'm going to call. Um, script called plane manager and the plane manager is going to um, trigger it on a collision so I'm going to say void on collision enter so this function gets called uh, whenever the something collides with the plane and and the part here is how do we interact with um, the capsule at a distance we're going to say game object find capsule and then we need to get its component so the script component get component capsule manager and then the name of our function and our function is change color and so so far we've been um, getting components and interacting with the built-in fields and the built-in methods of those components and now this is one that we wrote, right? This change color here refers to this change color there. Cool. And now the last thing that we need to do is we actually need to make our sphere fall. In order for our sphere to fall, we need to add a rigid button. All right, I press play. And when I hit, there's a collision and the capsule becomes black. Great. So this is the first way and the easiest way that we can interact with objects at a distance by calling, uh, by making functions public on a script that is attached to them, and then calling those public functions from other objects. Like the way we did this, that here game object dot find name of the object get component name of the script, and then the name of the function. The problem we're going to have is if we want to have a bunch of capsules, right? If I say duplicate and 
I move this guy a little bit here, and I duplicate again. And then I move this guy a little bit up, and so on and so forth. I'm just going to create three, but imagine that we have like 50 or 100 of them. Now our solution would be to copy this line and to say gameobject.find capsule and then capsule parenthesis one and so on. That would be kind of annoying because it doesn't scale. We need to have like 10, like if we have 50 objects, we need to have 50 lines. The way we can deal with this is by having a um, an event system, like a, a, a custom made event system. The way that it works in Unity is through delegates. And a delegate is kind of like a subscription manager. So we're going to start by creating one public delegate void subscription. So this delegate, this is kind of a function. And it's a function that could be accessible um, from all the different objects. And we have a subscription. We have a delegate called subscription, and we want to have specific events. And one of the events would be like on collision. So public static event. And then what type of event is it? It's actually a subscription event because it belongs to delegate subscription on collision. Cool. No, actually, we don't need those. So what we can do now is on collision enter, we're going to actually trigger collision. We're going to say, hey, this like on collision thing, just make it happen. And for it to happen, to happen in a meaningful way, something needs to react to it. And so this is when, in our capsule manager, uh, we're going to register the event. And by registering the event, um, I mean that we're going to tell we're going to set up the script in a way that we say whenever this event happens, so the on collision event of the subscription delegate, um, we're going to uh, we're going to uh, do something. In this case, we're going to call change color. So we can say um, plane manager because the event is on the plane manager script dot on collision. And then now we've added an event. So we use this like plus equal syntax to say, add this new thing that we want to do whenever on collision happens. And what is this? Uh, one, of the, one of the things that we want to do, in this case, we only have one. We're going to say change color. And so in this case, at the start, we say whenever like on collision is going to happen, this is when you do change color. And we can actually remove the public keyword from uh, change color. This can just be like, our internal private method. I'm going to go back to Unity. It's going to reload the script. And if I click play, sphere falls, and all of them change and become black, right? Because all of them they have different names, but they all have the same um, the same script, right? They all have the same capsule manager script. And all of these say, okay, go fetch the play manager and fetch the on collision event and register something to happen whenever there's um, a collision. In this case, we wanted to change color. And this could scale up quite well, right? We can duplicate and then we move all of these to the left, we duplicate these again, we move all of these to the right. And because there's always the same thing being registered for one event, the event happens, bam, collision, everything becomes black. So this is the first step um, into... Um, it's not the first step, actually. This is how you do um, event systems. Um, so that we don't have to look for game objects, we don't have to manually say, okay, take this one, do the, the action, take this one, do the action, but rather we go on the game object we want to affect, and then we add a new event and with that new event, um, we can have uh, any behavior that we want. So this is for public functions, the easy version when you only have one object, and events when you have a lot of different objects. This is across space, and now we're going to talk a little bit across time. Across time means that we actually want to wait um, before doing something, or we want to do something over one second, or two seconds, or three seconds. 
So there are different ways we can do it. Um, the first one is invoke. Invoke is pretty easy. Invoke is basically, um, it does something, so it calls a function after a given amount of seconds. So for instance, if we wanted to say, um, we wanted to call this onCollision function, uh, not immediately, but like after one second delay, we would write invoke onCollision and after one second, so 1.0f. Now I click play again. Sphere is going to fall. Hmm. So what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, make it a little bit more elaborate. Um, we're not going to uh, call change color whenever the event happens. We're going to have some intermediary function which is going to, ch to call change color after a certain amount of time. And this is going to be called like handle collision. And all that handle collision is going to do is it's going to invoke change color after one second. And instead of um, having change color react immediately to the event, we actually want to the collision event, we want handle collision to be there. So whenever the collision happens, we handle the collision. The handle collision says, actually call change color, but after one second, and then change color does what we know it does, it changes it, it, changes it to black. And we can make it a little bit more interesting by replacing uh, 1.0 by something like random range between 0.5 and 1.0. So for each of these different capsules, it's going to pick a random number between 0 0.5 and 1. That's going to be the amount of seconds we're going to wait before triggering change color. So we go back to our editor. Press play. And you see how all of these, all of the capsules, have actually been triggered at different amounts of times. So some of them waited half a second, some of them waited one second, some of them 0 0.7, and so on. So invoke is a nice way to just like wait a certain amount of time before doing something. There are other um, uh, there's another way to deal with uh, time which is coroutines. And coroutines allow you to just wait an arbitrary amount of time and do arbitrary things um, without having to do one statement after the other. So let's, let's um, comment that out for a second. And let's do, um, when we handle the collision, let's do change color over time. Uh, so this is going to be a coroutine changing color over time. So it's going to fade in, right? Um, so we're going to say i numerator change color over time. So i numerator is the type of um, what coroutines are. Instead of being void, it returns an interface for an enumerator. And what we're going to say is that we're going to say for int um, We're going to change from a color that is completely white, so 255, 255, 255, to a color that's completely black, so 0, 0, 0. So for um, int i equals 255, i is greater than 0, i minus minus. So we start with 255, and while i is still bigger than 0, we remove one at i every time. And then we're going to do two things. We're going to do change the color a little bit. So similar to what we have, we do get component, mesh render, dot material, dot color equals new color, 
and then we say by i i. So when it starts, it's going to be 255, 255, 255, and by the end, it's going to be um, 0, 0, 0. And then we actually can tell it to wait, right? So we're going to say yield return new wait four seconds. So it says, okay, change a little bit the color and then wait. And we're going to wait for 0 0.1 second. So basically, we're going to be very like purely white, and then we're going to wait 0 0.1 second, and we're going to become a little bit darker, wait 0 0.1 seconds, a little bit darker, wait 0 0.1 seconds, and so on. And now that we've defined our coroutine, we need to call it, right? And we need to call it by saying start coroutine, and we give the name of the coroutine, which is change color over time. Okay, let's see if it works. It reloads, press play. The reason why they're staying all white, I think, is that Unity doesn't actually deal with colors between 0 and 255. It deals with color between 1 um, and 0. And so we need to uh, change a little bit of for loop so that we start from 1 and then we end up at 0. And instead of removing 1 at each step, we're going to remove 0 0.1. And actually, this should be a float. Let's try that again. Press play. Bam. And you see how they fade over time between white and black? This is because we change a little bit the color, then we wait, we change the color, we wait. If we wanted this to be faster, we would wait less time. So we wait a hundredth of a second instead of a tenth of a second. Fade is super smooth. And if we want it to be very slow, then we say, you know what? Wait half a second every time. And at half a second, we're going to be able to distinguish all the different levels of color change. Tech, tech, tech. These are all the steps of the for loop until we get to completely black. So the way you do coroutines is. Um, the point of uh, having coroutines is this line, is that you can wait for seconds, right? You can also wait for frames, uh, but seconds is the most popular. And you can say, okay, do something, then wait. Do something, then wait. We could also say, okay, first change, change the color completely, then wait one second, then change the position, then wait one second, then do something else, and so on. The way we call those functions is not by writing something like change color over time. That wouldn't work. What works is that we need to specify to Unity, hey, this is a coroutine, this is something that happens over time. So we need to say start coroutine and then give it the name of our coroutine as a string. So this is how we've been doing uh, with delayed functions over time. Invoke is just about calling a function after a given amount of time. Coroutines allows us for more fine-grained control of what happens over time. Usually this is um, very useful for uh, fading in and fading out, for instance. As for um, dealing with objects over a distance and a lot of different objects, we've seen how we can use events and we can use public functions in order to uh, trigger uh, behavior over a large number of objects. And that concludes calling functions across objects across time for events and coroutines.